So uh, we are honored today also to actually we have so many distinguished we have so many distinguished guests at the same time. So all this excitement um, and honor about has um, also added value to our university as well as your presence here, Professor Nash. Um, Professor Nash is the uh, Nobel Prize winner of 1994 for his uh, also. Um, in, well known for his uh, equilibrium, Nash equilibrium, and I believe that today uh, you can uh, deliver a speech uh, on particular issues uh, which you would like to deliver to our younger scholars. Thank you very much, and we are listening to you. Well, I have this only in English, but of course English is sort of the language of business and economics very much. And, uh, so, uh, the title is Idea of Money and Asymptotically Idea of Money. I first had uh, something that was published called Idea of Money. I actually lectured at an e economic meeting, the Southern Economic so Society in the USA, the meeting that was in Florida. No. So I say, I've been writing and speaking about ideal money for a few years now. But it, it's not until in 2008 that there came into existence a time of global economic panic and recession. To avoid confusion, we want to remark that the, the concept of a system of money regarding as having ideal characteristics is proposed as a thing of value in terms of long-term e e economic interactions and the evolving equilibration of the characteristics of national, local, or global economies. It is not suggested, this is based on, I, I did a version to, to speak in 2008, and then after that, to avoid confusion, we want to remark that the concept Yes, well, I read that. It's not suggested that a shift from a money system that we could criticize as non-ideal would be convenient or would be a convenient or practical device for a state or an alliance of states to deal with a pressing financial crisis. In a crisis of that sort, a part of the challenge is a weak spot here in the, in the display. Or maybe if I go up and down. No, it's still there. There's something down the lower right corner. So I had an escape button. No, that's the next page you need. Next page. You see the lower right corner? And the green and red and some other My area. That's something that is uh, in the field. Рассуждал об этом и писал, а также говорил на эту тему несколько лет. Почти и э, до 2008 года э, я не говорил об этом, пока не наступила экономическая паника и рецессия. Well, so, uh, my, um, it's not suggested that a shift from a, a money system that we could criticize as non-ideal would be a convenient and practical device. Uh, in a pressing financial crisis. Now, at such times, progressive changes might not be well understood. President F. D. Roosevelt memorably called the psychological atmosphere of a time of financial and economic strains and upheavals when he said, we have nothing to fear except fear itself. Now, in the, the panic of 2008, it seemed in, in many ways as if it was all a matter of fear. You, various types of things like stocks or, or uh, uh, junk bonds or, or uh, junk mortgages and things were becoming sus suspect with regard to their value. And so there were wide swings in markets. But uh, 
since it's been re re there's been recovering since early in 2009. We we're still as as far as you could see we're on the recovery path. But of course, the natural event would be recovered to another cyc cyclical maximum and then cycle downwards to an unpredictable depth. Revolutionary or evolutionary changes or reforms in systems of money. Our topic is focused on an idea, specifically on ideal money. And it's not hard to see that there are naturally different routes by which a system of money might become either improved or might become, in some cases, more degraded and less worthy of praise. Change can come at a stroke, like when Alexander cut the Gordian knot, or it can come in a gradual fashion through many smaller steps. This latter can be classed as the pathway of evolutionary change. It is easy to illustrate cases of revolutionary reform or change in systems of money. A good example came in, 19, in 1717 when Isaac Newton, supported by George, II, George I or second with, fixed the value of the local UK currency to a precise amount of gold that defined the, the value of the, the currency, the pound, in such a way that it was immediately recognizable throughout the continent of Europe as of a fixed value in relation to generally accepted standards of the time. And this was the origin of the gold standard. Another example of revolutionary change was when Argentina attempted to establish an internationally respectable system of money by means of a currency board. This attempt failed conspicuously, but the failure was rather similar to a bankruptcy event involving an ordinary commercial bank, which simply turned out to have insufficient capital. And when the use of paper and printing was developed in China, that made possible another revolutionary change, namely the introduction of print paper money. So now we have to wonder how the printing presses are operating in, in relation to inflation. Okay, so probably we also allow some abstract uh, resume in translation, if you allow, several minutes. They could translate it to the audience. Well, if you want to translate, mm -hmm. then... Пожалуйста, если сможете резюмировать лекцию профессора, то, что было сказано до нынешнего момента. Спасибо. Революционные и эволюционные изменения или реформы в системе денег. Наша тема, Громче, пожалуйста. Наша тема э, сконцентрирована на идеальных деньгах. Э, и особенно я говорил об идеальных и асимптоматически идеальных деньгах. И я хотел бы сказать что система денег может быть улучшена или в какой-то степени может быть ухудшена. И здесь есть раз, различные пути и способы. Различные изменения могут быть, приходить в одночасье, и как здесь сравнимо с Александром, который перерезал Гордиев узел. И Хороший пример – это когда в 1717 году, когда Исаак Ньютон при поддержке Георга I зафиксировал стоимость валюты Великобритании в соответствии с определенным количеством золота, и в соответствии с этим эта валюта стала опознаваема, легко узнаваема на, во всей Европе. И это то, что мы называем золотым стандартом. И еще одно, то, что я бы хотела сказать, это революционные изменения, которые, когда Аргентина пыталась установить свою систему денег с помощью так называемого курса валюты. Спасибо. So I, I mentioned uh, the uh, 
revolutionary changes, and I, I mentioned Robert Mundell and some classical persons of earlier times, Rueff and von Hayek, and this is like in one way some dramatic change, like the change to the euro is, is quite revolutionary for the countries who are involved. Now, oh. И также я хотел бы сказать о Роберте Манделе, который является известным ученым и занимался э, вопросами перехода к евро, а также и другие ученые, которые я хотел бы упомянуть. Э, переход э, некоторых стран э, на валюту евро является также очень э, важной, важной задачей и э, важным, э, важной yeah. темой. And then I, I mentioned Italy and Greece, but in this version of the talk, I'll come back to Greece because when I uh, last spoke about this, it was in January, I think, of 19, uh, 2010, and I spoke in Germany, a place called Wallendar, a, a business university meeting, And I, I speculated upon the situation of Greece entering the Euro, speculating that Greece uh, may have valued the drachma too high in relation to the Euro when it entered, so which had the effect that the national debt of Greece became higher in terms of Euros than it would have been if, if the drachma could have been valued as less In relation to yours. Я также хотел бы сказать о ситуации в Италии и Греции. В 2010 году в январе в Германии я читал об этом лекцию в университете и говорил а, также о ситуации перехода Греции на евро. On the other hand, from the case of revolutionary changes, there's often the possibility that a system of money may gradually improve in quality, either through somewhat accidental circumstances, like a very favorable trade balance. You might have that in Kazakhstan, lots of exports, not, not much problem of paying for the imports needed. Or through the learning of good teachings of applicable varieties. And I mentioned a series of American economists have been notable through their contributions, which have enhanced the understanding of how systems of money actually function, and particularly of how the dollar and its value have been interacting with the relevant factors of influence. There has always been some populist thinking in the USA which can encourage ideas about money that are not well based in any scientific sense. And the teachings of some of the notable economists have sometimes given a more scientific perspective on the areas where the populist viewpoints have been influential. Некоторые американские экономисты были достаточно Некоторые американские экономисты были достаточно известны через их вклад, который они внесли в понимание о том, как системы денег функционируют, и в частности в том, как доллар в США и его стоимость, а также ценность взаимодействовала с различными факторами влияния. Конечно, в США были различные популистские мысли и мышления, которые, с помощью которых развивались идеи о системе денег. И это, конечно, в некоторой степени связано с наукой. И теории известных экономистов иногда давали более научную э, перспективу, то есть э, учение и теории экономистов э, можно было рассматривать с научной точки зрения э, в тех сферах, э, где популистские мышления были достаточно влиятельны. 
M. Fried, M. Fried, M. Friedman or Milton Friedman acquired fame through teaching the linkage between the supply of money and effectively its value. In retrospect, it seems as if elementary, but Friedman was as if a teacher who, uh, who retaught to American economists the classical concept of the law of supply and demand, one of the most basic things in economic thing. This time, this in connection with money. We can also note at this point, so you see when you print a lot of money, then the value of the money goes down, the supply and demand. We can, can also note at this point that the understanding of the effects of the uncontrolled behavior of all the various users of a domestic money is the inclusive category of description into which the notable contributions of a series of American economists can be recognized. Mr. Friedman. Yeah. Мистер Фридман получил свой, стал знаменитым через свою теорию, где он связал деньги и их стоимость в ретроспективе. Это кажется элементарным, но Фридман в этом деле, в этой сфере был, можно сказать, учителем, который рассказал нам, показал нам американским экономистам классическое понятие закона и это также связано с деньгами здесь также я хочу заметить что понимание всех влияний и эффектов неконтролируемого поведения различных пользователей денег в стране это инклюзивная категория в которую можно в которые могут быть включены американские экономисты. Ф. Кидленд, Р. Лукас, Е. Фелпс и Е. Прескотт – это известные американские экономисты, которые помогли в улучшении проблемы, возникающих в сфере макроэкономики. Без спорта о директной конституционной реформе, of the status quo of the dollar in the USA, they've contributed much enlightenment in relation to the interactions between intelligent categories of the users of currencies, or in particular the dollar, or in the central authorities of central bank, treasury, state institutions, executive and legislative government. Ф. Кидланд, Лукас Фелпс и Прескотт являются известными американскими экономистами, которые внесли свой вклад в лучшее понимание различных вопросов, связанных со сферой теории макроэкономики. И не говоря о конституциальной реформе статуса КВО доллара США, они внесли большой вклад в понимание касательно взаимодействия между различными категориями пользователей различных валют, в частности доллара, и также центральных властей, то есть это центральный банк, казначейство, различные государственные институты, а также правительство. And have optional strategies by means of which they will be able to seek to optimize according to their own particular economic interests leads to the recognition that the task of central planners and managers of a state are not as simple as if they had only to herd flocks of sheep. 